Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. What an amazing morning. I got up early. It was almost as if it was when my husband was working. He'd be out the door at 530. And in the fall and the winter, it's pitch black. I'd be up in my room, lighting my candle, getting all ready for prayer. I would be in prayer for like an hour and a half. And so this morning, I woke up early. I couldn't fall back asleep. And so I just thought, okay. I I can't grab my phone and start reading the readings, but I'm going to meditate while I'm laying here. What did I meditate on? The Eucharist. And it wasn't like it came out of the blue. I was thinking about the Eucharistic revival video I have to do later on today and my 830 coaching call and all these things that I had going on. And I thought, okay, I'll meditate on the Eucharist. Why not? And it was beautiful. In the beginning, when I would think about Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity in this beautiful, holy communion, this host, in my mind, a circle appeared and it was like bright, lighty, I don't want to say it's gold. I don't know what color it was. It was closer to white. And then my mind would go thinking about, oh yeah, maybe I could say that about the Eucharist on my video. And then I'd have to pull myself back into the presence of God because I'm wandering off, even though it's kind of on topic. And the minute I would wander off, that circle would go away. And then I'd pull myself back into the front of the Eucharist and boom, the circle would reshape. It wasn't perfect. And it kind of morphed and it came out of, you know, the side of my eyes. (laughs) It was so weird. I don't know why I'm sharing that, but, you know, I miss those prayer days. And I need to get back to them. I'm still praying, but not like that. And I also wanted to share because maybe you're up in the middle of the night. That's your time to talk to God intimately. Who knows? You might fall right asleep, but maybe that's because you needed the sleep. Or maybe it was evil that was putting you to sleep so you wouldn't talk to God in that peace and quiet. Okay, but guess what? Then I read the readings And hello, perfecto, bingo, gato is funny-o, how he does-o, his (laughs) things-o. I don't know what the heck that is. But seriously, I laughed. Why? Well, we're going to read that right now. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Brothers and sisters, draw your strength from the Lord and from his mighty power. Put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. Therefore, Put on the armor of God that you may be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to hold your ground. Stand fast with your loins girded in truth, clothed with righteousness as a breastplate and your feet shod in readiness for the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, hold faith as a shield to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, 
which is the word of God. With all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the spirit. To that end, be watchful with all perseverance and supplication for all the holy ones and also for me, that speech may be given to me to open my mouth, to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, so that I may have the courage to speak as I must. I just looked out my windows. The sun is coming up. It's so beautiful. What a morning with this reading. I know I say this. I've kind of, you know, this is St. Paul, by the way. He was saying, pray for me. But as I was saying this, I was like, I'm like, guys, pray for me too. Pray that I have the courage to go out there and bring this light to the world to help people know that, wait a minute, evil exists. That's the biggest lie, that evil doesn't exist. Put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against his tactics, the devil's tactics. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with, princip with the principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. Bottom line, we're here fighting spirits. And they come in forms of their own selves. They impact, influence, and possess other people. Their policies, their... I don't know what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> I just lost it. Like what they do, they can cast spells on us. They can do their own rituals. Why do you think 3 a.m. in the morning is a time that many of us wake up? We should be praying the Hail Mary because guess what? It's the opposite time of when Jesus died on the cross. So they take three o'clock in the morning and they do these things in secret, these evil, evil spells, and they cast them on the world. It sounds so silly. It sounds so unbelievable. How does this even happen? These evil people don't care about us. They use us. They abuse us. They destroy us. They pervert us. They draw us into their evil ways. They could care less. It's fine time that we realize that that is actually the case. But guess what? We shouldn't be afraid. Please don't be afraid. Please continue to know that there is power in Jesus' name. And we are going to talk about fear and all of the spirits that are wrapped up in fear. And I know that these aren't all of them. I guarantee you. Fear is the first thing that Satan goes for. Fear is a scary emotion. And why do you think Jesus says over 365 times in the Bible, do not fear, do not be afraid. Don't buy in to the BS. Don't. But what do we do? We let our emotions suck us down. We're smarter than that now, aren't we, y'all? Fear. <clears throat> Ministering spirits. Fear. <laughs> There's actually a spirit of fear. I don't know why. It didn't start with fear, but okay. Ministering spirits. Interesting. Fear. Torment. Violence. Fear of death. Murder of spirit. Spirit of death. Ichabod, spirit of death dash Ichabod, I C H A B O D. Hmm, that's a name. Some of these spirits actually have names, and they're big, big spirits, like leaders of all the minions. Suicide, impending death, tension, fear of people and their opinions, human respect, torture. Trouble, anguish, darkness, grief, night, black disordered grief, trauma, weeping, oppression, morbidity, fixation, helplessness, 
hopelessness, insomnia, insomnia, funny, disturbances, apprehension, edginess, phobias of heights, crowds, cars, planes, water, elevators, hospitals, claustrophobia, etc. Inner conflict, I am not worthy. And I've got to... I gotta have a light on. I can't see this. I have to move my book toward the light. Go toward the light. Okay. Self-condemnation, self-abandonment, rumination, ruminating, ruminating. Sorry. <laughs> Gosh, I feel sometimes like I'm learning how to read on this podcast. Embarrassing. Okay. Unworthiness, fear of disapproval, fear of persecution, fear of reproof. Fear of ac accusation, <laughs> fear of failure, perfectionism, crisis, implosion, nightmares, excitement, turmoil, horror, dread, disgust, gloom, doom, desperation, disappointment, anxiety disorder, panic disorder, fear of pain, fear of the cross, fear of being hurt, repression, suppression of joy, suppression, Panic, anxiety, oh, panic, comma, anxiety, worry, paranoia, suspicion, fear of condemnation, fear of judgment, fear of rejection, projected rejection onto God and others. Huh. How many of us project rejection onto God and others where we feel like God has totally rejected us? Projection is real, people. It's happening all over the MSM. If you don't know what that is, that's mainstream news. They project everything that they've done. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Sometimes I can't stop myself. Okay, projected rejection onto God and others. Fear of close relations. Disordered fear of God or hell. Restlessness, nervousness, tremors, tension, headaches. Roaming around. Nervous habits, shackled, pressured, viced, trapped, barbed wire, squeezed, captive spirit, frozen, frozen. I know there's this Disney movie, Frozen, some bad stuff in that. Okay, isolation, negativity, reclusion, staying alone, abandonment, betrayal, seclusion, withdrawal, indifference, blockages, numbness, closed up, shut up, stupor, locked up, paralysis, immobilization, shut down, wall, coldness, apathy, sloth, escape, loneliness, fear of loneliness, sluggishness, listlessness, sleepiness. Wow, that's a that's a roller coaster ride for fear. And remember, everything I read are names of spirits. Even phrases, which is quite bizarre, because in that one, what did we have? I am not worthy. So you can say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce the lie or the spirit that I am not worthy. And I command you to go to the foot of the Holy Cross for Jesus to pour his precious blood on you and to receive your sentence, never to come back again. Part two, Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus, please fill me with your love. Fill me with the knowledge that I am your beloved child, that I am worthy that you loved me to life. Just ask the Lord to fill your heart. I don't know if you heard that. That was my stomach crawling. <laughs> I have to make a comment. It's funny. I have one of my, um, one of my uh, coaching clients say, you know, you say that there's all this noise in the background. I can never hear it. And I don't know. I think you got to have heard that little gurgle in my tummy because my microphone is right there. Okay. So let's take Heed to what St. Paul says. Stop trying to fight the fight in the physical world. It doesn't 
really work. Because even the people that are in this physical world, the possessions and the stuff that is here are being influenced by evil and by good. We are being influenced by evil and by good. And the more that we pray and we go to God and we're praying in his spirit, the less we are going to be harassed and obsessed and bugged and bothered and tormented and all of that by Satan. That's what it means to live in the spirit. Why? Because the other spirits can't touch you. That's why it's important to actually Pray all day, like St. Paul says, incessantly. And I used to think, dude, you're flipping nuts. Who can do that? I have a job and a crazy one at that that doesn't just start at nine and end at five. It's the constant talking to God. That's what it is. A prayer doesn't have to be sitting down and going through like a novena for half an hour or praying the rosary. Prayers can just be little lifts up to God, turning our heart and mind to God instead of turning our heart and mind to the world and the things of this world, including all of those little sneaky little things that dupe us. Oh, I'll find, you know, relaxation and calm myself down by watching hours and hours and hours of some stupid Netflix show or streaming something. Or I'll go find my peace. You know, I'll have a couple of glasses of wine that turn into a bottle. Maybe I'll hit a joint. I'll calm myself down that way. Or boy, I'm really riled up. I just need to get this all out. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, watch a porn flick and Take care of this stress, if you will. These are worldly things. You could even look at spirituality stuff here on this earth as bad too. Maybe you got into new age. Maybe you're starting to go in a direction that is not where the Catholic Church tells you to go. That's tempting you. Not the one true God. Not the one true church that Jesus handed off to Peter. The Bible that came from the authority of the bishops of the Catholic Church. Yes, it's so easy to be duped. Why? Because the Catholic Church calls us to a life of morality. It calls us to be saints. And it hasn't changed its teachings for 2,000 plus years. I know when I started realizing that the Catholic Church was the truth and my encounter with God in confession, and I did not want to be Catholic. Are you kidding me? I don't want to change my life. How boring would it be (laughs) to be a practicing Catholic? Are you kidding me? Oh, what an idiot. What an idiot I was. I bought the lies. And I was just going to go to a different Christian church because it looked fun. Because police officers were dry directing traffic. So many people were going there. It had to have been a good time. Remember that the evil one always questions God's word. And why would we want to live a life of restraint? Because it seems so boring contrary to the culture that lies to us. By the way, all the messaging... All this stuff comes from the evil rulers of the world. As St. Paul told us, these people at the top of everything are not good. And this doesn't mean every single person. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. But there are many and they're becoming so visible. You can clearly see who is good and who is bad. Clearly. By how they pervert God's word, how they pervert the commandments, how they actually make fun of Christianity, 
especially the Catholic Church. Think of how many people hate the Catholic Church, including many Christian denominations. I've said this before. Remember, all of the the commercials and things, they're all to pull us away from God. How often do you see people doing yoga, people doing new age stuff all over commercials? It's, it's in Cheerios commercials. Why? Because it's not the true God. It's not the way that you worship the one true God, the one and only Jesus Christ. The truth is the way in the life. We can only get to the Father if we go through him and his church, his Catholic church, the creed. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Do you know that other Christian denominations actually pray that prayer as well? Lots of them have removed the Catholic out of it. <laughs> okay, getting on 20 minutes. Don't be afraid. Go back, listen to those spirits. Start your list of spirits that bug you, that torment you. But don't fear them. Honestly, don't talk to them either. Like, don't even give them any mind. Just use Jesus in the deliverance prayers. Use his name. Say it. Get on with it. Fill yourself with God. Don't entertain, talking, negotiating. Don't do it. There's nothing good that can come out of it. You don't make the deal with the devil. You cast it out and you pull God into you to fill you. You put on the armor of God on the outside. You put on the armor of God. You fill yourself with God on the inside. So you are solid with God. Not just this hollow shell. All right, let's pray. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. God, you are so awesome. Thank you for this gift of faith. Thank you for the eyes to see exactly what life is all about. Exactly the fact that we are on our own individual paths, but somehow, some way in your beautiful, majestic vision, you have pulled us out of the pits of hell and have shown us how to live peacefully, joyfully, and fearlessly. We thank you for all of the weapons, the armor, everything that you've shown us. And we mostly thank you for your church. What would we do without the Eucharist? What would we do without Jesus, his body, blood, soul, and divinity? We receive him at mass. If we're in a state of grace, please help us Go to confession and come back to your church. Help us reconcile with you, Lord, eyelash to eyelash, so that we can be the most pure as we allow the Lord into our hearts, our souls, our minds, our bodies, in the holy sacrifice of the Mass, in holy communion. Help us never to take for granted that beautiful gift and all of the sacraments that you have available to us, help us, help us to receive them joyfully, frequent them so that our life on earth is so much easier with you, Lord. Mary, take our left hand, Holy Spirit, her beloved spouse, together, Guide us and lead us with our guardian angel. Please protect us. Please help us know God's will, God's voice, and the evil in our lives so we can be decision makers of good. 
In your name, Jesus, we love you and we pray with you, in you, and through you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, do not fear. Go fight this fight. Gosh, we're so blessed, aren't we? We know the rules of the game. Now, let's play it. I don't know about you, but I'm a little competitive. I want to win against this guy. I know he's not a guy. He's a spirit, whatever. They have no sex. But I want to win again. I mean, I was going to say something different than guy. Trust me. Started with a B. Ended with a D. Has Astrid in the middle. <laughs> okay. No need for profanity. Sorry, Lord. I didn't mean to say that word. <laughs> okay, everyone. Ah, Go be love. Go be joy. Go be peace. Because guess what? You've got this with God. Find something more with God. And have a blessed and inspired day.